Well, shack update. Both antenna are on. Tri band on the right and the left is the fire stick. Also mounted the uh, fire extinguisher on the back door just for easy access if I need it. I can just open the door and grab it. I don't have to lean in and dig for it. Um, bad lighting. There's the fire stick body mount. And then the tri band one is over there. Really should have put some light on. The, uh, the old Lacom storage box is in the back of the van. I might do this again with some light on. Uh, yeah, we're not going to see a thing in here. Right, there we go. The uh, Lacom storage box. That's better. <coughs> we can see now. Um, that's for the fire stick. That one's for the tri band. Watson. 2 meters, 70 cm, and uh, 6 meters. And there's the old Lacom storage box. Ah, got my little comfort chair. Um, the old LED light I had in my old shack, I made a bit of wood, a bit of pine, uh, three, six, eight LEDs, um, drilled the holes, just poked the LEDs through, just got that G clamped on at the moment, it's USB, uses very little light, this is just on temporary at the moment, because it's quick and easy, and voila, um, two 75 amp hour batteries, I used to have in the shack, or in there, um, the old solar system used to have in the shack is now in the storage box, so it's portable, portable. I can um, obviously go portable in the car, or I can um, take the box out and go portable again. Right, that one turns on the battery bank, but we've been mobile, so we're just going to double check it is all still wired up. Yep, battery bank and solar panel get turned on together. Solar panel's not plugged in at the moment. Saying 12.4 volts. Um, batteries seem to have hold their charge, they've been in storage for a couple of months. I still need to order a light bulb for that, um, but I don't think I need one now because it's just going to be blinding me um, with the seating position in the van. 240 out, coming from the 1000 watt inverter. Um, three sockets on the left for panels, power coming in. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I've got a lead that I can plug into there. And then the cigarette light on the dashboard and I should be able to charge this while driving. And then on the side there, two 12 volt sockets out and there's a USB as well. Well, two USBs. And they get turned live by that one. That one does the light and that one does the inverter. And right, so all I've got to do, plug in the roof light. I've got a couple of little spotlights as well, but I'm not going to bother with them tonight. There we go. And I can turn that on and off with the switch on the fuse box. Alright, I'm just going to quickly get the radio out. Wire, wire one of the radios in. Um, just to christen it, really. Just whack this all in the van today. And uh, no, I just want to uh, see who's on, uh, on CB, really. Just double check the fire sticks working all right. <laughs> Actually, just realised I forgot the SWR meter. I went upstairs to get the SWR meter and I forgot it. <laughs> I can't. Oh, I've got the SWR on the radio. What we're doing? I'm not with it. I'm miles away. It'll be one of those days today. Right, let's get the radio in. Right. Well. Uh, while getting all this stuff out of storage today, I did have a new one of these in a packet and I'm glad I picked it up because the other one I've left in the, uh, the small go box. It's only a cheap one, so I'm probably just going to blow the fuse on it. I checked it, has got a fuse in there. Um, so yeah, the lead for the radio doesn't actually reach the socket in there. Um, check the SWR and it's bad. Um, so I've obviously got to recheck, uh, redo the SWR, but I haven't got an Allen key with me so I can't do the top of the fire stick. Um, but it is working though, I'm hearing skip, it's probably France, 1.8, and then 2.4 I think it was, yeah, 1.8 to 2.4, so 
so not the best SWR. But like I said, I've just whacked it all in here. So I need to sort out the SWR. Battery's gone down now from 12.4 to 12.3. 12.0 when I transmit. So uh, it's okay. At the moment, I'm drawing 0.03 amps when I key up. Drawing 2.4 amps, which is good because that's a 10 amp charge controller. And I'm actually running the radio from the charge controller at the moment. We'll just see if it works. Should do because it's a bit better charge controller than the uh, small go box, which wouldn't let me run the radio from the go box. Um, right. Yeah, one nine a Roger, one nine a Roger. Uh, radio check, please, anyone? Uh, radio check, please, anyone? Radio check. Right, well that's not very good for uh, demonstration purposes, so I shouldn't have recorded that. But I'm going to have a play around for 10 minutes. Um, the coax there for the CB is coming out there, it's coming all the way through the bulkhead of the uh, vehicle. And then um, the Watson tri-band is coming again through the bulkhead down there. So all the wires are all tucked away. Got a waterproof jacket hanging up over there. Hat, gloves. A box of work boots and several pairs of gloves in here. And a little mini mag mount there. A six meter antenna there for the handheld. Um, radios are in this case. There's two more handsets in there. Um, so I can transport them in and out of the vehicle so I don't have to leave them in the car overnight. We wouldn't want to be doing that, would we? Right, we're going to have a play. Well, that's all working fine. Flicking around modes. Seems to be a lot. It's um, upper sideband. Okay, it's gone quiet now. Try the FM UK40. And um, 10 meters upper sideband. This was active about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> there was loads of there about 10 minutes ago. So yeah, everything's working fine. Um, slightly high SWR on 27 meg. Um, not worried about it too much. It's it's under under three. It's below the red, and um, I'm only out just testing it. Light seems to be working fine. It's getting a bit darker now, so I can plug the light in and actually see the difference. It's still daylight out there. I'm going to wire in a separate switch for this for the light, I think. Well, I had the other light on here with the button on the top. But I've got the light on the phone, that doesn't help. I might be moving that because it's a bit, a bit bright next to my head. So yeah, that's just testing the shack really. Update on the mobile shack. The um, uh, what's it called? Mail boss from the charity shop. She called it the uh, the Pope Mobile. <laughs> I remember the Pope having something similar many years ago. Um, so yeah, it's nice now. It's uh, it's uh, it's off grid and um, all good. Panel solar panel isn't installed permanently yet. I just sort of sit the panel on the dashboard now and then when I need some power. But I'm going to bond um, the 10 watt panel directly to the roof 
I think. Um, it's going to get airflow because, as I say, the roof is ribbed. So there's going to be plenty of airflow. I'm just going to, um, not going to bolt it on, I'm just going to bond it on. Bond on the panel permanently. Um, and then I've got the little 1.5 watt for the blue go box and then um, the 10 watt panel, which is down there in the bag, so I can just grab it and take it home. Because um, again, nothing stays in there, the van at night. People keep saying I should tint the windows out, but if I tint the windows out, people will wonder what's in the van. So I like leaving them clear so people can look in the van and see there's nothing in here. Um, apart from a, a chair, a bungee, and probably my coat hanging up. Um, even the fire extinguisher is actually out of sight. Angle of discretion when you look in, you can't actually see the extinguisher. Um, security first. Right, well, I think I'm going to have another five minutes, then head off down the hill. I only just came out because I was a bit excited, the aerials are on, and um, I'm eager to try it all out, and <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> loving it. So the shack's up and running, uh, we're off grid, and um, this is going to be awesome. And I've worked out the tent I've got, um, I've got like a long three-room tent, and the middle room has the door. I could actually put the tent on the back of here, like a T-shape, open the door, go straight into the tent, go left or right into the rooms and then there's a back door I could open up so I could go from the van through the through the tent and out the other side. <laughs> I could do some awesome camps with the big tent I've got. I could probably fit the van in the tent as well. <laughs> right, well I'll catch you in a bit. I want to go play. Right, it's 10 o'clock. Batteries are holding out. 12.3. It was on 12.4 when I got up here. Um... 11.9 now when I key up I think let's just double check that 12 point 12 volts draining 2.7 amps um so yeah the batteries are holding out okay I'm not gonna risk any more tonight I'm gonna get the panel on the roof tomorrow get a couple of hours well get a whole day of sunlight and charge them up well top them up the 10 watt panel is sufficient really just to keep them topped up as long as I don't run them flat um, the lights now being moved to the wall behind me, G clamped in there, and the wire is also hidden away in the bulkhead. Just about to see it there. All wires are nicely tucked away. So I'm going to pack the radio up. The radio, uh, the light behind me is brilliant because it lights up the radios and the logbook, and without blinding me. More skip coming through. Um, plenty of skip out there tonight. Um, radio is working fine, blah blah blah. Um, got a couple of log, uh, logs in the book. Right, I'm gonna pack everything away and um, I'm sure I'll leave that on so I've packed up. <laughs> Just turn the light off there. Right, and we'll catch you on the next video. Probably be out tomorrow night for the whole, well, not the whole night, but a good few hours. And um, for the eSpawn um, net and um, yeah it's all good it's all good it's all gravy right back in the box too i was going to take the light to the side of the van but i decided to g-clamp it right well that's it from the mobile shack 73s and catch you on the next video